Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to RUSI for this meeting. We are holding this meeting at a, a particularly important time for NATO uh, in the run-up uh, to the Warsaw Summit. And the Polish government, of course, is very active, uh, talking to a wide range of NATO uh, member states and governments uh, and indeed non-governmental organisations such as ourselves in that process of build-up because the reality is the build-up to summit uh, the consensus building in preparation for a summit is as important as the summit itself. If you arrive at the summit and you're not sure what decisions you're going to take, uh, then you have failed in your process, I suspect, uh, in most important issues. So uh, we very much welcome the fact that you, Minister, have uh, taken the time to come to talk to Rusi uh, about the challenges ahead for, Wars uh, for the Warsaw Summit and, and for NATO uh, beyond the summit. And I'm particularly pleased also because of the very special relationship that the UK and Poland have had historically. Uh, people in this country do not forget the very important role uh, that Polish uh, servicemen and women played uh, at the time when we were facing maximum peril uh, in the summer of 1940 and the great contribution uh, Polish uh, soldiers, airmen, made at that time and indeed thereafter to help our security. And it's on that basis, I think, of mutual assistance that the UK was a very strong supporter uh, of Polish membership of NATO. Uh, and uh, it will work in close partnership with, with your country, I think, to try and formulate common policies that serve our mutual interests. Uh, and as a uh, as a person from Rusi, as a think tanker, I'm also delighted uh, that the minister himself has had some experience in the Polish uh, think tank community, certainly from a Rusi perspective. We think it's a valuable part uh, of policy making and policy discussion in a democracy that you have centres of expertise on defence and security policy outside government that can provide constructive criticism and commentary uh, and a source of expertise for those inside government and I know uh, one of the things that's uh, most to be admired about Poland as it's developed uh, since its liberation from communism is the way in which it's developed an increasingly uh, vibrant non-governmental uh, sector not only in relation to defence but in relation to other areas. As you'll see from the from the uh, distributed biography, uh, Tomasz Sarkowski, uh, now Under Secretary of State in the Ministry of National Defence. He studied uh, down the road in King's College. Uh, he did his master's there. Also uh, uh, did uh, uh, programmes at uh, the Defence Academy of the United Kingdom and indeed also uh, in Monterey, I believe. Uh, so uh, a distinguished career as an analyst uh, and now uh, in a very important position indeed in uh, the Polish uh, Ministry of Defence. His primary topic for discussion, I think, will be uh, the way ahead for the NATO summit, but uh, he is also uh, leading e uh, efforts within the Ministry of Defence uh, in Poland on their own defence reform programme. I think one of the things that's important to note in relation to Poland is Poland is actually quite a large country in terms of population, in terms of a, a robust and, and indeed growing defence budget. So it has contributions of its own to make to collective defence and indeed to national defence. It's not, and sometimes I think our debates about the way forward for NATO, at least here, are all about what particular uh, capabilities uh, the UK or the US or France should be deploying uh, in uh, on the eastern frontier of the alliance. But there are very substantial capabilities indeed uh, for the countries situated in that region, not least those of Poland. Uh, and I, I would encourage uh, people to discuss some of the issues because I think there's some really interesting developments taking place in Poland in that regard. And finally, uh, we've asked uh, Giles Ahern, who's the head of the NATO and your policy team at the British Ministry of Defence to also provide uh, some commentary uh, on the subject. Uh, Giles has been in his current position, as I understand it, for uh, just under a year, a long career uh, in the Ministry of Defence uh, in a variety of very interesting positions, worked in the private office of three successive Secretaries of State uh, at a time when we had a 
a rather rapid turnover of secretaries of state in this country for defence uh, practice. I certainly wouldn't encourage, but he, 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 uh, he managed that uh, very successfully, uh, worked uh, in our defence intelligence assessment staff on counterproliferation and a range of other, uh, uh, other responsibilities which you can see in the biography. So I think that's enough for me. Welcome, Minister, and uh, uh, you, you kick us off. Just a final remark, the, the remarks from... Uh, both our speakers will be on the record, uh, but subsequent questions and answers will be off the record. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, Professor Chalmers, Dr. Ahern, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great uh, privilege uh, to be a guest of this renowned institution, which is known to be the f probably the first uh, think tank in the world dedicated to, to security and 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 defense. So I'm really I'm really honored to be to be your guest. Thank you very much for the invitation. I'm here in London um, on my uh, visit, which which um, on the on the official visit, and we we've had meetings at the Ministry of Defense uh, and also at the Foreign and Commonwealth o Office. Um, because this is a, a very important time for both Poland and the United Kingdom um, as, as partners. So what, we, uh, what we face right now is a chance for a new opening in our, in our relationship. There is a political will that has been expressed in, in the, uh, during meetings of, of prime ministers in their exchange of letters. And, and uh, there is uh, certainly a number of, of issues where we could um, build substance for, for our relationship. I mean, the Polish diaspora here in the UK, the, the, the UK investment and in Poland growing trade between our countries, and uh, the EU matters, which uh, I hope will still be a matter of mutual interest after, <laughs> after June, but it's, it's certainly not for us to dictate any, 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 nor, nor suggest any and the outcome so certainly would be in, in, in our interest to, to to keep you in the in the United uh, in the in the European uh, Union. But regardless of the of the decision that the British people w w will take in, uh, in in June, security and defence uh, are likely to remain uh, the cornerstone of 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 our relationship, uh, which uh, naturally brings me to the to the to the main subject of uh, of our today's um, discussion, which is the. Um, uh, which is the upcoming uh, Warsaw uh, summit, which which takes part in a in a in a very important uh, moment for the for the transatlantic security uh, architecture. But let, let let me start with 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 Wales and 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 and, and the, the the summit in 2014 has been a very uh, important moment for the for the, for the alliance. It also happened in a very in a very peculiar uh, in, in a very specific. A time and and we very much uh, appreciate uh, the role of the UK as a, as a host and and as an, as an important security player during the summit and also in the in the um, uh, implementation of the uh, of the of the summit decisions that that, that have been uh, very um, uh, important. But perhaps you know in September 2014. Uh, we weren't uh, able yet to uh, have a full grasp of the dynamic that we are facing, both from the east and 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 from the south. So, hence, the, it is it is it is important uh, to take a step forward in in Warsaw in all those uh, important uh, aspects, a, a step forward in a direction that was that was rightly uh, set in uh, in in in, in uh, Wales. And let me just describe a little bit the, the challenges uh, and, and uh, that we are facing and, and the issues that we are likely to have on the agenda of the, uh, of the, of the summit. Naturally, in Poland, we are mostly focused on the, on the threat from the, from the east, uh, which is uh, much easier uh, defined. I mean, it's a large state actor that has proved to be, to be willing to use its force for uh, for aggressive purposes in the in the neighbourhood and it's, and it's proved to to um, be determined to, to even undermine uh, foundations of, of uh, international law and order, which is ver very um, uh, very uh, dangerous, of course. And but th this this willingness is, is also underpinned by growing capabilities. 
and and the range of the of the scope is, is is really challenging. It, it starts from non-military means, uh, I mean intelligence and and, and cyber in, included, uh, through conventional, I mean the increased readiness and uh, and modernized capabilities have been have been fielded and and have significantly altered force ratio and also the strategy of the of the alliance in the in the in the eastern um, flank. Um, uh, um, all in all, the alliance is still more powerful than uh, the, the, than Russia. But in, in selected areas, uh, Russia could enjoy a significant advantage if it decides to take on a, a, an aggressive uh, role vis-à-vis -vis the uh, the alliance. And this is worrying and and, and has to be addressed. We, we shouldn't also forget about the nuclear aspects we've for for many years we've ignored uh, the imbalance uh, in some areas of the of the uh, of of nuclear deterrence and 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 the uh, we hope that the uh, the alliance will also take uh, that into account in uh, in uh, in warsaw but in terms of uh, most likely decision decisions that they're going to be taken in in Warsaw, the, and perhaps the enhanced forward presence is, uh, is mostly in the focus of, of our interest. This is the, the idea to actually um, balance the, the concept that will defend the East by reinforcement and by local forces um, with, with some presence of the Allies from the West pre uh, who would be present on a persistent basis in the, uh, in the, in the Eastern flank. This is not to copy the, the Cold War uh, concept of our defense we are not talking ab about uh, corps divisions n n nor even brigades in, in in single countries we are talking about um, uh, forces that are smaller but th that still should have a credible uh, military uh, value and and um, there is now uh, a debate whether whether such forces should be sh should be located I and mean, there, there's there is a largely a, a consensus um, uh, whether they should be placed in, in, in the Baltic states, because those states are certainly most vulnerable, and also their uh, own internal capabilities need to be supplemented by, by some external uh, help. But, uh, I mean, at least in Warsaw and in a number of other countries, we also understand that uh, for, for our presence should also be placed uh, in Poland. And this is not, not because Poland is, is a small and, and completely vulnerable country. We certainly have important capability gaps, which we are going to address in, in the coming years, but we are not, and we are not going to be a nuclear country, for instance, and we are, uh, and, and there is no uh, nuclear presence of the alliance in the, in the, in the east, so this is one, so, so the allied presence should bolster that aspect of the, of the alliance. And second important thing, Poland is a centerpiece of the, of the eastern plan, flank, and any in, in any contingency, Polish territory, I mean, the, the, the support of Poland, the Polish capabilities should also take an important role uh, in, 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 the, in, the, in operation to help some other allies. So, for instance, the only landline of communication with the Baltic states goes through Poland. This is a, narrow, a rather narrow, narrow passage of land. Um, so, in order to preclude some uh, accomplished facts, facts and put us in a, in a rather uh, uncomfortable position, both politically and, and military, it's important to be um, in the spot from the beginning of the, of the conflict. And, and the, the uh, intelligence assessments tell us that, 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 that uh, reinforcement wouldn't do the, the job in, 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 such a, in, in such a case. And um, uh, uh, some other aspects of the of the of the uh, defense of the eastern flank I include reinforce, reinforcement uh, ca capabilities. That that means uh, reinforce command and control um, issues, um, uh, prepositioning of of equipment, and uh, the infrastructure that will be immune to the anti-access area denial um, capabilities of, of of Russia, which are the capabilities that are specifically designed to undermine the the reinforcement uh, potential of the of the alliance. Uh, last but not least, because we are not talking about large potential that is going to be deployed to, to, to the east, also the uh, ISR and L warning needs to be bolstered. And, and Poland has also presented a number of uh, ideas on, on on how to structure uh, the the defense and deterrence in the in the eastern flank, including our own contribution. Because again, this is uh, we don't want to be just a recipient. I mean, we. 
we already contribute to the to, to the security and assurance in other countries of the of the eastern flank, but the um, effective implementation of the of the deterrence and defense in the eastern flank will also allow us to be more active in in other um, theaters. And since I mentioned other theaters, I'll, I'll move to the south, which is where uh, the summit is, is uh, likely to, uh, to adopt a framework to, uh, on how, to, how NATO should, should, should ad address those, those issues. And, and, and here the, the issue is slightly different because it seems at least right now that it, does, it doesn't require um, a substantial number of capabilities. It, it requires an ingenuity in, in, in how we uh, approach uh, indirectly the, the, those, those issues, in, in how we uh, help uh, partners. Certainly, it, it, it might also require some direct uh, actions and, and capabilities like improved ISR, um, um, patrolling uh, capabilities, and, and perhaps an ability to, um, um, to, to sometimes intervene in a very su surgical uh, manner. Uh, and 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 um, Poland also uh, Poland s supports the, adapt the, the adaptation of the alliance both to the east and and to the uh, and to the south. This also this also um, underpinned by by our by our um, uh, contribution to the measures in the in the south. I mean we are also doing air policy not only in 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 in, in the Baltic states but also in, in the Balkans. We are now s sending the. A frigate to the Aegean. We are helping the anti ISIL coalition in some indirect way, and 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 the government is likely to announce so, some new substantial measures, non kinetic measures that will that will significantly improve um, capabilities of the of the anti ISIL coalition, which Poland will contribute in a, uh, very soon. And other issues that, that are on the plate of the of, of the Warsaw Summit include include uh, enhanced cooperation with partners, uh, a very di diversified portfolio because we have Sweden and Finland, which are very important players in the in the Baltic Sea and could contribute. We could m mutually contribute uh, to uh, to our uh, defense. We've got countries in the east that that, that whose ca capacities sh should also be reinforced to. Uh, preclude uh, aggressive, uh, uh, some other aggressive scenarios, and last but not least, countries from from the south, important pa partners who uh, whose role in in projecting stability should not be neglected and should be promoted. I think that both Poland and the UK would would very much uh, like to avoid a scenario in Afghanistan, which was the case in Iraq, where we've sacrificed. Uh, Blood and 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 um, treasure, and 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 um, and then the situation actually reversed to 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 even more. So the summit will also tackle those, those issues, as well as uh, some capability issues like the cyber, uh, the and the resilience of the of the uh, of the NATO allies. Lastly. There, there is a chance for substantive step forward as regards EU and NATO um, cooperation, and 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 we 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 put much hope into into those uh, prospects, and, and uh, that leaves much space for Poland and the UK for, uh, to cooperate. So, for instance, the enhanced forward uh, presence could be one of those, and and we count that. Um, I mean, we, we, we see some very positive signs from, from the British government, and it's very likely that Britain will play a constructive ro role. We think it wouldn't take much for, for Britain to, to be one of the, one of the leaders of, uh, of, that, of, that, of that effort, and uh, indeed we've, uh, we've discussed uh, uh, po possible concepts and arrangements dur dur during my visit um, uh, today. Po I mean, both countries also sh sh share... Um, Concerns about the South. Well, certainly Poland is not as much uh, active as the UK, but uh, our our ability to, to take part in, in out of area missions will be growing uh, uh, together with our modernization plan of our of our armed forces. Um, but our cooperation should, should also span beyond NATO. And and for instance, the this is an ambition of this government to also reinvigorate Polish involvement in in the Northern Group. Perhaps there, there are also some 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 other uh, areas. I mean, the arc, maybe maybe some other um, arrangements. 
and and uh, since I've mentioned the Polish defense uh, modernization, modernization program, there is also a, a, a potential to cooperate in, in, in defense industrial aspect because we believe that since we we hope that both us, I mean pol policy decision makers, academics, and think tankers will help this pol to transform this political will into a substantive relationship. It should be built on a long-lasting, long-lasting and mutually beneficial uh, fabric of, 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 of a relationship. And um, yeah, Professor Chalmers, you, 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 you were kind to, to, to refer to, to the glorious past of the of, of the brotherhood of, of arms of, of, of Polish and, and, and British soldiers, and and uh, we share in Poland the same. Um, uh, sentiment, uh, although from a political perspective, we, um, I mean, we see that that, that gl gl glorious past and, and the alliance in, in the Second World War that wasn't um, completely fulfilled from from, from our perspective. And <laughs> sometimes this is not really an unfair perspective because we we sometimes do not understand that the uh, that the British. Um, Influence on, on a decision ha, has been, uh, I mean, was shrinking in, the, in 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 the time of the of the Second World War, and 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 as recently uh, discovered files prove, I mean, the Winston Churchill was actually willing to uh, also address the issue of, of the Soviet dominance over over <laughs> o over over uh, Central Eastern Europe. Nonetheless, th there is there is some um, um, uh, some uh, uh, feeling of, of uh, unfulfillment, unful and I I believe that. That that uh, mutual cooperation over over those issues that I've mentioned would <coughs> would uh, uh, be a great occasion to to, to address um, such a feeling in a in a very um, historical uh, manner. And likewise, I have a similar attitude and hopes regarding the the summit in Warsaw because sometimes we divide the alliance into those who are into more into out of area missions and th those who are more likely to deal with territorial defense or those that are interested in the east or north or, or, or in the south. But I think that um, it doesn't require charity or, or gener generosity to, for the alliance to, uh, to uh, remain cohesive and relevant, and, and relevant for the challenges of the, of, uh, of, of the present. It just requires farsightedness and, 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 and a sense of responsibility. And I believe that all of our countries will understand that those challenges, uh, uh, those various challenges affect all of us in, in either direct or indirect way and, and we should be together uh, facing facing them. So thank you very much. I will, having said that, I will, I will uh, give the floor to you. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> thank you very much. So thank you very much indeed for those uh, thoughtful uh, comments and extensive comments as well. And I think uh, we were all impressed by the fact that it, uh, you tackled the totality of the agenda uh, facing Warsaw. And I'm sure we'll be willing to answer questions across the range of issues which we are dealing with. <laughs>